everybody! I'm doing another live sewing video. Um, let me refresh my screen so then I can see if there are any comments and I can answer questions. Alright, so um, what I'm going to be doing today, let me uh, go back one more time. Okay, here we go. So now I can see the screen. We are going to be making, at least I am, uh, this uh, swoon bag. It is called the Summer Festival Sling. It is a free pattern from swoonpatterns.com. You just download it, it's a PDF, and you can uh, print it out and make your own bag. So um, the cool thing about this bag pattern, in addition to it being free, is it comes in two different sizes. Um, it looks like this is the the large size um, right here. So that's the size I'm going to be making. Um, the other cool thing is that there is no hardware or zippers required, so it's very beginner friendly, and it's um, it's sort of budget friendly. Um, the reason I say that is because it does require a lot of shape flex interfacing. That is a woven interfacing. Um, let's see, what does it take? For the large, it, it takes uh, four and a half yards. So um, it actually is on sale at Joann's today, 60% off if you're, uh, you're a Joann Fabrics. But yeah, you definitely want to get that on sale or shop around. Sometimes you can get it cheaper online if you buy it by the bulk. And then for the mini, it requires three yards, so it's not quite as bad. And then um, for the exterior fabric, you can use uh, like a quilting cotton or a home decor weight fabric and it requires one yard of of that fabric and then the contrasting it uh, requires a half a yard and as you can see on this one um, she used a, a vinyl for the contrasting and that's partially what I did you'll see in a minute and um, that is all you need besides the obvious needles and thread sewing machine stuff so we are gonna get started now the instructions, um, they're only four pages long, so I might possibly finish this bag within the hour. Um, oh, hi there. Um, so anyway, let's get started on that. Um, the first step, other than the obvious cutting and fusing, which I've already done, is uh, the sewing. So the pockets are first. Let me go grab those. Um, also, let me show you the fabrics that I'm using. All right, so this is the lining, and then it's upside down, but um, for this purpose it doesn't matter, but um, this is for the, the outside, and then I'm using a dark gray for the vinyl contrast, and these are coordinating prints from Cotton and Steel, and um, I've had this, this fabric for a while, it's been out for a couple of years, and um, the designers, Whoever designed this, I can't remember which person it was, but she and several others left Cotton and Steel and are now designing for their own label, Ruby Star Society. So if you like this sort of aesthetic, um, I encourage you to look into them. They just released their first collection. It's really cute. All right, so we have our pockets and we need to pin the contrasting pocket to a lining pocket. Um, it says ones without the interfacing. I think I screwed that part up because I put interfacing on all of them. Whoops, that's all right, not a big deal. Um, so yeah, so contrasting and aligning. So if you used a vinyl for the contrast in the pocket, that's what they're talking about, and then the lining would be your lining fabric. So that's, hopefully that's not too confusing because I did it a little differently. So I'm kind of having second thoughts now, maybe I'll I don't know. Okay, I think it'll look fine. All right, so we're putting the right sides together, matching all the raw edges, and we're sewing along the top curved edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, then the bottom straight edge at a quarter seam allowance. So let's get that done. And if you've watched me before, you know that I hate pins because I hate getting stabbed. So I use these little clips whenever I can. They're called um, 
Well, it said the name brand is called Wonder Clips by uh, the company is is uh, Clover, and you can get these at your local quilt shop and possibly big box stores. I'm not sure. Um, some of mine are the Clover brand, but they also do have a, have a knockoff on Amazon, and um, I have both, and I can't tell the difference. So, all right, and I'm keeping my lid up here because I'm running low on this spool of thread, but luckily I have another. All right, so I'm setting my stitch length to a 3.0, and again, a quarter inch seam allowance. is done that's what it looks like um, my interfacing is cut kind of goofy so it doesn't there we go it looks better on the side sort of <laughs> all right and then we need to do the same thing on the bottom So that's what we have here. Don't mind my weird interfacing. All right, so um, next step, curb, cr uh, cut into the curb seam allowance a few times. So that is so when we turn it to the right side, this curb is nice and smooth and not all kind of janky looking. So just cutting a couple little curbs, make sure you don't cut your, your, uh, your seam there. So don't cut your thread, that would be bad. Oh, that's wild. Just as I did it, I, or I said that, I cut my thread. All right, so I'm just going to sew that seam with a very slightly deeper seam allowance. This reminds me of the last video when I said to make sure you don't twist your straps, and I actually twisted my straps, and then after the video, <clears throat> my husband helped me uh, remove the rivet so I could turn it the right way. Ah, oh, good times. But anyway, that's what we're doing. Okay, and then turn the pocket right side out and press well. Um, I kind of had a trouble with the uh, with the angles of the camera today because I have a lot of stuff on my work table. So, nah, you're not going to be able to see me pressing, but I think you kind of get the idea. So, but I will I will try better next time to to get a better angle. Um, this is a really long sewing or crafting work table, whatever you want to call it, but I have quite a few things on it right now. I have, um, my mom actually bought an embroidery machine. It's the brother, I'm looking at the box, SC625. Um, it was, I think she said it was $400. She bought it at Walmart. So anyway, um, I was actually borrowing it for a little while when my gigantic machine broke down. Um, and then she doesn't want it back till after after the holidays when, because um, she's having visitors at, at her house. So now I'm just kind of keeping it for her. And then I thought that would be a really great opportunity to make some, some embroidery tutorials for those of you who are brand new to it, because that is the cheapest way to get into embroidery is to buy this particular model. So I thought it would be cool to, uh, do videos using that very machine that someone watching that type of video would be most likely to have. So I have that and then um, I moved my silhouette cameo machine back over here too. So that was over there. I, I got motivated again to work on heat transfer vinyl so that's why I moved that back over here. All right. It's a little wonky to me. Eh, nobody will notice. All right, so repeat to assemble the second one, and then two lining ones. So basically, you're gonna see me do this how many more times? Two. Oh wait, I screwed up. I was supposed to cut this out of vinyl. All right, you're gonna watch me cut vinyl. My bad. Let me sew these real quick. So okay. The, 
<laughs> back up. Way to take a beginner pattern and make it as complicated and confusing as possible. I assure you the directions that come with this are, are um, more than sufficient. So, um, despite my uh, inadvertent confusion here, um, you can definitely make this just fine. All right, so this is what happens when I wait long periods of time between cutting out a project and actually sewing it. Right before I started this video, I sewed a, a spoon Heidi clutch bag, and I can't even remember cutting it out. That's how long ago that was. I had no clue whatsoever. Um, but luckily I had all the pieces there because, yeah, that was weird. Don't remember buying the fabric, don't remember cutting it out, nothing. Okay, here we go. So these are the inside pockets. Alright, so again, we're gonna clip this curve here, and let's see if I can manage to not cut my stitching. There we go. And then we don't have to do it on the bottom because this is a straight, a straight line. Alright, so I'm just turning it right side out. Alright, that's kind of what it looks like before we press it. And I'm going to lay it flat on my ironing board. And press this flat. Alright. And then after this, I'm going to go get um, this pattern piece and cut two pieces of vinyl. Which hopefully I have enough vinyl. That's really going to suck if I don't. I think this will actually work out well because um, then I can um, then I can show you how um, how I cut out my marine vinyl um, when I started uh, using vinyl on bags I would just fold it over like a wood fabric and that is not very accurate so all right let me grab this vinyl real quick all right so this is um, marine vinyl. It's got like what they call a knit backing. They have some that has like a flannel back. It's kind of fuzzy. Uh, in my opinion, that does not work well for bags. But having said that, um, there might be somebody who, who has great success with it. So I'm not going to say for a fact it's not good for bags. Just my opinion. All right, so let me see. Where did I put the envelope? Here it is. Alright, and then also, um, this is how I store my patterns. These are just page protectors. You can get these pretty cheaply. And um, I just print the, uh, the cover page and then the pattern pieces. I no longer print the directions out because I have a computer right on the other side of my phone here. And I just bring it up on the computer and I follow the, the instructions off the screen, but if that is not an option for you, you can, of course, um, print out the instructions if you'd like. Where in the world? I gotta take these out. And then also, when you're working with a pattern like this that has multiple sizes, make sure that you cut the correct size. See, like, here's the pattern piece I'm looking for, except this is the mini version, and I'm making the large. So, just be very careful, because want to cut the wrong size. Ah, found it. Yep, that is the large size. Yeah, these are really funny looking, very long pattern pieces. So I'm just going to throw this aside and put that away later. Alright, so this is the pocket panel, and you can see it's on a fold. So what I do... Uh, 
figure out how to do this. I think I'm going to just tilt the camera down. Alright, there we go. Okay, so here is the vinyl. And I have it turned wrong side up because I'm actually going to draw on it. You can use a regular pen. Um, I'm using this uh, Pilot Friction Pen. It's um, heat erasable. And then I'm going to grab my scissors and a couple pattern weights. So what I'm going to do is grab my weights and set them on here. Oops, let me move this over. And then I'm going to trace along all the sides, including the fold. Now I'm not going to cut there, but I'll show you in a minute what I'll do. So I need to know where that fold line is, even though I'm not definitely not cutting there. Oops. There we go. All right, so we have our, our square here, or sort of. We have our shape. And then what I'm doing is flipping it over completely like this and then lining up the fold line on the pattern piece with the fold line I drew. And then this is going to give me a complete pattern piece after I trace it. And then this way it's a more accurate cut. And then of course we can't we can't pin this to the vinyl because it'll leave permanent holes. So this is, in my opinion, the best way to go about this. So, oh uh, no, I ran out. That sucks. All right, so we're not gonna be able to finish this today, are we? So I'm gonna cut this one out. just barely inside of that line. So I'm gonna cut that out. Now you can get marine vinyl at, um, I know for sure Joanne Fabrics. I'm not sure about Hobby Lobby. And I, I can't vouch for their quality. I have used the marine vinyl from Joann's and it works very well, but they have a very limited color selection. So I order mine online from my punk broidery. All right, let me put this angle back up because it's not the, not the best angle for a family show. All right, so here is our piece in marine vinyl. All right, so I'm going to sew this one and then obviously I'm going to need to order another roll of this. It's a, this color is called Smoke. I need to order another roll so I can finish the bag. I thought I would have enough on that roll, but I do not. Alright, so I am just going to be pinning one to the other. Alright. We're using our clips. And then we're going to sew this together just like we did the two lining pieces together. Here we go. And we're sewing it just like before. And then just as before, we're going to be clipping our curves.
All right, and then, um, as always with marine vinyl, we can't we can't touch this with the iron or it'll melt. So we can't really press this like we did with the others. All right, so what I'm gonna kind of do is it's called a finger press. Basically, I'm just squeezing it with my fingers to try to flatten it out. And then you can clip it, but don't leave these clips on for too long because they'll leave an indentation. All right, there's that. All right, so I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and go as far as I can with this, and then I will uh, continue it in a future video. Yeah, this is kind of difficult here. All right, and then um, we're gonna be top stitching along this top curved edge. And I am kind of chicken, so I'm gonna use, uh, I'm not gonna use a contrasting thread on this. Did I cut it? No. All right, I'm gonna take out my pink thread. I'm gonna leave it in the bobbin because I have, the lining is pink. But I am gonna use this uh, charcoal gray. Hopefully I have enough of this thread and I'll run out of something else and do the top stitching. And then for the top stitching, I am gonna be using a four stitch length. And then that is a quarter inch uh, distance from the edge. Stitching on vinyl makes me very nervous because there are no do-overs. Whew! Done. Not perfect, but decent. No one's gonna notice that tiny bit of difference. It's a little wider over here, but that is fine. And then it doesn't say to top stitch the bottom. All right, so what are we doing next? Besides changing my thread back to the pink. All right, so I need the side panels. So I will get those after I put this thread back on. It was really hard to choose a thread color because this particular color on the outside is not quite gray and it's not quite brown. I don't really know what it is, but I definitely don't have matching thread. So I'm just gonna go with pink. There we go. All right, now let me get that piece here. Okay, so this is the side panel here. So we have the contrast, which is the one that goes on the outside, and then the lining. So let me see. On the right side of all four side panels, we're marking a horizontal line that's 4.75 inches up from and parallel to the bottom edge, and it's an inch less for the mini version. So make sure that you use the right measurement for the one you're making. All right, let's throw that aside. Okay, so four and three quarters. So I'm just doing a couple marks and then I will connect them with a longer ruler. I do have longer rulers, they're just not within arm's reach. Okay, so I've done one so far. Um, so I'm pinning my, or I'm clipping my contrasting pocket, which is this, lining side down to the right side of this. All right, so I'm matching the bottom edge of the pocket to the marked line and the raw edges of the pocket to the side edges of the side panel. 
All right, and the pocket is going to be wider at the top, and that's just to make it bow out a little bit so it's um, easier to, to reach into. All right, so basically here's my line. Here's the bottom of, of, of my pocket, and I'm just lining that up and the sides. So I apologize for the lack of visibility of that. Once I'm done clipping this, I will hold it up so you can see what, it, what it'll look like. There we go. Alright, so this is what it looks like now that it's been clipped together. You can see that this um, extends out a little bit, so that would be a really nice useful pocket. All right. And then I will be probably basting. Let me see. Nope, it's it's just regular top stitching. Okay, so I'm gonna be top stitching along the two sides and along the bottom, both about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And when I stitch this bottom one, I'm gonna be extra careful to make sure that this lining stays hidden in here. I don't want any of it showing. All right. I should have left the gray thread in. Let me do that. That sucks. Well, that's what you get with a uh, live YouTube, and you can tell this is very authentic. I've never made this pattern before, otherwise I would have known to leave the, the matching thread in here. I do get the feeling though that even if I did try rehearsing all this stuff and and recording it ahead of time, it it wouldn't be much better. <laughs> and you don't have the added benefit of uh, laughing at my expense, right? Okay. So back to the gray thread. side. And these sides um, seams won't be visible at the end, so it doesn't matter that one of them is pink and one of them is gray. That does not make any difference. All right, we have a pocket. Yay, look at that. It's not too bad. sew the lining pockets to the lining panels and then if I had one of these I'd be sewing the other one to the other side but obviously we're gonna we're gonna be skipping that for now all right so here are my two lining panels and then I will be measuring up the four and three quarters of an inch I'm marking it with my heat erase pen it's pilot friction it's wonderful There we go. And then here's my pocket panel. Oh, I was supposed to top stitch that too. Let me do that real quick. Okay, now it's safe to take off the gray thread and put the pink back on. And there's thread everywhere. Oh, 
Okay, let me top stitch this really quick. That's not terrible. It's on the inside. Okay, so now I got that ready. Now I can attach it using my clips to the side. Something I find really helpful when making something with multiple pieces is just to label all of them. And you don't need any fancy tools for that. Um, what I do is I keep um, a supply of scrap paper. Um, you know, like when I print something and screw it up or I didn't use the whole, whole sheet of paper, I just cut off the rest of it. And I just cut those up into little pieces. You don't need to go buy post-its or anything like that. You just use what you got and it's free. All right, so here's that. For this particular pattern though, since there are so few um, pieces, I didn't bother with that. And then that is our lining pocket. So that's gonna be really handy. That's a huge pocket. All right, so let's do the other one. Oops, there goes my pattern piece. Okay, again, measure up from the bottom, four and three quarters for the large size bag. pocket piece. I'm trying to remember, I think this is going to be, I think it might be my 33rd spoon pattern that I've, that I've, that I've tried. And I've been happy with every single one. These are really good patterns, and I think the instructions are very good. But I know some people are visual. I know my mom is like that. She uh, she does much better with um, um, watching something being done rather than written instructions. doing the assembly, the exterior main panels. Let me grab those. Okay. Check this out. It's like three feet long. I can't even show you the whole thing at once. There we go, sideways. It's enormous. But um, this is, of course, the handle, and if it's longer than you'd like, you can always knot it at the top when you're using the bag. Alright, so we are attaching these two pieces at this bottom seam at a half inch seam allowance. Let's do that. Back to a 3.0 stitch length. 
half inch seam allowance, so it's different from what we've been using. And there we go. Simple. All right, let's go to page three. All right, so we're pressing that seam allowance open and top stitching along both sides of that seam, about a quarter inch away. So that's gonna make it sit nice and flat. So there we go. And then we get these clips away and then I can top stitch this. It's gonna be a little awkward because I've got all of this over here and I don't wanna get it caught in the seam. All right, so lengthen my stitch. top stitching. All right, and then now we're attaching one of the side panels. All right, so we're, oh, and you're, we're almost at an hour anyway, so I would have, I would have uh, stopped for the, for the week regardless. All right, so what we're doing now is I have this main piece lying down right side up. I have um, one of my contrasting the outer side panels right here and we are needing to find the center but since we uh, traced it the way we did we already have a center right here it's already marked so I'll be using that to line up to the seam on the main panel and then I'm going to clip that okay then I'm pinning the top left corner of the side to the top left corner of the main panel, right sides together. So see how it goes out a little bit right here? And then it has, this piece has this. Well, those line up. All right. And then instructed to start at the center pin so this is the bottom and work our way up the left side matching our raw edges and pinning or clipping the side panel to the main panel every inch or so until we reach the top And then once I finish this, I will repeat to pin or clip the other half of the side panel to the other main panel. And then we're gonna be sewing a really long seam. right see how I got this giant bubble at the top all right so I need to redo this somehow all right so I'm gonna take out some of these clips I'm gonna have to ease in this um, this main panel, or no, it's gonna be the vinyl that I need to ease in. Oh gosh. All right, I think I think I can work with this. 
the, the reason that it's a little tricky is because we're sewing a curved thing to a not as curved thing. All right, I'm actually gonna sew this and then clip around the other side. All right, and I have to be very careful not to have any puckers in my seam. And this is a half inch. And then don't forget the back stitch. This is going to be the trickiest part, I think. basically manipulating the fabric to do something that it doesn't want to do. Trying to avoid getting a little tuck, and that's kind of where the, the fabric kind of folds over in the seam. Okay. I'm still getting kind of this bubble at the top here. and I got tucks. So you can see where it's kind of folded over right there and then I can't tell if it is here too. Yeah, that part looks fine from the outside. This one it's barely visible but if I got time to do it, I got time to do it right. So what I'm gonna do there is just rip out a couple of the stitches in that area and do it over. Um, but I need to be very careful that um, I sew in such a way that I do not leave any of those holes in, that I've already made in the vinyl from sewing it visible on the outside of the bag. on the outside. All right, that's pretty good. All right, I'm going to try to press out these little creases without melting the vinyl. All right, and we have a little bit of time left. Okay, so I am going to finish this seam right here and then and then I will stop for the week. And as soon as I order more of the uh, smoke colored vinyl from my punk broidery, I can finish this bag. 
I could probably get it done in just one more video, but I think I've said that before and been wrong, so. Okay, so again, from starting from the bottom up. Oh, now I'm just noticing now, I bet this is, <clears throat> this is why I had an issue. It says, so with the main panels, um, wrong side up, and I was doing the opposite of that, so when I sew the seam, I will, um, or did I? No. That's it. No, I, that's what I did, never mind. Or did it? I, oh my gosh, I can't remember what I'm doing. All right, well anyway, you, the main one, the one with the fabric, um, you need to sew with that up because you want the, um, the bigger piece down so the feed dogs help to ease it into place, which I definitely need help with. And definitely don't let um, tricky steps like this discourage you. You can always rip out stitches and and then of course don't forget the big picture and that it's just a bag. There's nothing major riding on it. Um, the worst case is that you you ruin it so much that you can't salvage it and you gotta throw it away. Well you still learn from the experience and I mean you're out a little bit of money yes but you know, again, you, you you learn a lot from the experience, and plus, even attempting it, that is more than what most most people will will ever do. Most people, unfortunately, will um, um, they'll think about maybe sewing and say, "Oh no, I can't sew at all," and not 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 even attempt it or. Some people, it's so sad, they'll buy a sewing machine and then it'll just sit in a closet. So the fact that you're trying, that, that, is, that is remarkable. So don't, don't, don't beat yourself up, don't be too critical of yourself if your work is not perfect or if maybe it's, maybe it's a huge disaster, that's okay, just try again. You know, maybe maybe try a different pattern and come back to that one later. You know, try with a different fabric. You know, learn from the experience and enjoy yourself. That's the whole point of this. You know, I'm not I'm not making these bags for a living. I'm making them, you know, to you know, occasionally I do sell them, but mostly I'm just making them for my own enjoyment. You know, I feel really proud when I when I finish one of these, and um, a lot. Oftentimes, I'll I'll give them as gifts, and people are really happy to to get them. And if they're not, don't give them one ever again. <laughs> um, like the one I just made in my last video, the Maisie. Um, I had it sitting in my kitchen for a couple weeks after I finished it, and um, one of my one of my kids, she. Uh, asked about it, you know, what I was going to be doing with it, and I said, I really don't know. I, I didn't really think beyond making the bag and think of where it would end up. And uh, she said that she really liked it a lot and asked if she could have it. And I said, absolutely. I was really flattered because, you know, it's, um, well, we all know that um, teenagers can be real particular about, about what they, about what they like and everything, and that's fine. So I was actually pretty flattered that she wanted it and now she she uses it every day and then another bag that I that I made recently it was another swoon one I've been making a lot of swoon bags lately um, the Atlas rucksack um, I made that and I posted it online and one of my friends um, said she liked it and I said well hey you want the bag <laughs> so um, I sent it to her and she travels a lot for work so um, she's essentially turned the bag into um, her own version of Flat Stanley 
and um, so far uh, she sent me a photo of it at, uh, at an airport near San Antonio. So the bag is going to be uh, more well-traveled than I am. <laughs> All right, we're almost done with this seam. It doesn't perfectly line up. There we go. Oops. All right, so let me show you this. So here's our big old seam here. And I'm going to turn it right side out so you can kind of see the bag starting to take shape. All right, let's push all these little curves out. Okay, so let me hold it up. So here's part of the strap. So basically this is half of the bag. So um, this is the main portion here. And then here's the side. So you can kind of see where it's going here. So it's very cool. This is a huge bag. I think it'd be good for um, for, for uh, traveling. So you could definitely fit like a tablet or magazine or some uh, diapers and stuff like that in there. I think it'd be cool. All right, so anyway, um, I'm gonna stop for now and uh, I will uh, make the next installment of this video as soon as I can. Um, thank all of you for watching. Um, I'm gonna um, edit this later um, to add information in the description, like a link to the pattern and stuff like that. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, uh, definitely leave them in the comments below. Uh, it helps a lot if you click like on the video, um, subscribe if you want to see more, and there's a little bell icon next to that. And um, if you want to know whenever I'm um, posted, or whenever I've posted a video or when I'm going live, you click that bell, you'll get a notification. So, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something or at least got a good laugh out of my mistakes. All right, take care. Bye.